when I tell people about my research, I say, it like in a sentence, I spy on animals for a living. For a lot of us, the Antarctic is this kind of abstract idea, right? Like most of us aren't going to go there. You know, kind of why why should I care what's going on there if it's not going to impact me directly? It does impact us directly, but it's not very easy to see that sometimes. You'd think that by 2019, we would have a baseline of exactly how many wet elf seals there are, where they're living, how their populations are doing, but we don't. The reason for that is because they live in these really inaccessible locations. Much of the Antarctic is, especially where these animals live, is so remote and inaccessible and it's dangerous to get there. I will never forget this. I was making a map actually using the high resolution imagery and I saw these little black dots at the end of it and thought those had to be seals. And so that's what started this whole thing with the high resolution imagery. As long as clouds aren't in the way and if the animal's big enough, we should be able to see them and potentially uh, be able to estimate their populations. Now that gives us a totally new way of doing wildlife ecology and seeing places that you just can't get to, which is totally incredible. Some of the animals that come to mind are like elephants. We know we can see other, you know, herds of ungulates. We can actually see into the ocean as well. We can see whales. Antarctica is 17,000 kilometers around. So the reason we need the public's help is because uh, we can't do this on our own. And so if you go to www.tomnod.com, right now we are actually running a citizen science project on crab eater seals. Anyone can come in and after taking like a little tutorial and seeing what we want them to look for, tell us whether they think they see a seal or not. Being able to at least see the sea ice and interact in a way that is advancing science, um, I hope is an empowering thing for people.